to look prim and proper and reading for it. Yes, so yes. See again you you have yours all sorted out, everything ready to go. Yeah, Stems something. good to go. Yeah, something. Yeah, something there. Yeah, all so right. be careful, you know. And you have to be careful what you wear because th those days, you know, a lot of wind and bright sunshine. But if you have something that's too short, you know, the wind, any. So there's a lot to ensure that you have this. Come on, God, sir. Vaka, vaka, vaka. Vaka. Yo, yo, is vaka? Um, yeah, yeah, I think it's vaccine. Yeah. You started already. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> Nigel, you know how did last week work out for you? Last week was beautiful, you know. Blessed Saturday was beautiful, you know. As I told you, the little daughter was making first Holy Communion, so that was a wonderful time. And so I had to leave you on your own for a few. But last week was so I'm good. It okay. was ceremony was nice yeah, right. and had a nice little luncheon after so it was good nice to know you had teardrops on nigel like, you know you know when it's those moments there as a parent sometimes you, you feel the teardrops Did you, you feel the teardrops coming a little one and i don't think i had teardrops okay. right. but it was of course okay. emotional you know all right um, maybe Haley's had teardrops oh well yes i can know? imagine yeah. oh yes oh yes oh yes talking about teardrops nigel um um, I really believe some songs want to mess me up because Nigel, I have that song on my mind since I think since Tuesday, you know. Do you know that song Teardrops on My Pillow? Not the oh, yes. not the American one, eh? The the, 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 the um I think it's a it's a Caribbean song. Uh, you you have heard that song, right? Of course I've heard Teardrops on um, My Pillow. Um I think it's Shadow who sings it, you know. But Nigel, that song has been on my mind since Tuesday. Um, and four days after it is still there. I am, I don't know, I'm still trying to make sense of what Shadow is saying. I'm trying to figure it out. Yes, um, yes, still um, on my, why is I going to have a song for five yes, days? And, and it's, uh, it's not representative um, of what I'm going to I wonder if the people on the book can tell me why that would see. happen. But By the way, we have some, they, mm. <laughs> they get in the day, they, they, they're very early, so that's good, yeah, you know. So, yes, early. Alvin Thomas, good morning to you. I don't know why. What, that, why do you think I want to be having that song on her mind for five days? Can you help me out there? Uh, Snapper Laura, good morning. Um, you know, Lucia Bless Jones, good morning to you. Lucia, it's been a while, so good morning to you. Appreciate you really and enjoying us. Yeah. And of course, you know, Jacinta Ban is blessed Saturday to you. Um, looking forward to a great discussion. Why would someone have a song on I your mind for know. five days? Um, Niger, can you guys help us out there? And Nigel <laughs> talking about that song again. You know, some um singers they can really exaggerate. So that line um from I think it's Shadow, you know. Since you went away to Canada, Canada for me, happiness yes. is over. I mean, come on, you know. I can understand yeah. that. But Nigel, he goes on to say, since you went away with El Ramos, I, I caught myself talking to a lampus. <laughs> <laughs> eh, eh, no, man. That is exaggeration, we, Nigel? Well, that is, mm -hmm. let me tell you, that. that's what I... <laughs> That's what a GP can do for you, eh? So you can imagine that song on my mind, and he's saying something like, a, a, even a little, um, a little bulldog that used to like me, you know, the animal wants to bite me. But it's not to bite me. <laughs> <laughs> eh, eh, but then again, it's, it's Paru said, um, two, the $2,000 I give to she was to buy some sandwich and a coffee, so. Well, I mean, things are pretty expensive these days, so, you know, that's possible, you know? <laughs> Eh, eh, well, some songs, though, some songs, and that's good, they're eh, masking and all of that. Some songs are direct. Oh, yes, oh, you yes, oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes, it's, it's, it's good. Gaylord's Poor Union said, Ma John Levy, meet him at Wimwedeo. I mean, that is just boldface. You know, ah, that's boldface, that's boldface, that's boldface, and that's telling uh, you straight up, put him, pull, I need, I need him now. Yeah, meet him at Wimwedeo, yes. man. Mm -hmm. Yes, 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 that one is boldface, mm -hmm. but, um, we have somewhere there, you know, I mean, the mask is very nice. And, yeah. and oh, yes. when you listen to some of the lines, you're like, I mean, is that really, could this really happen know, for real? I know, I know, I know. Yes. <laughs> so, Nigel, it's, a, it's really a busy weekend. It's a holiday weekend as well because, of course, Monday is a holiday. And um, at times like that, when it's the midday holiday, you know, I miss those times when I was a little girl. And at that time, the workers' holiday was a big thing. Oh, yes, no more, it was, it was. No and as we say, workers holiday, let me say good morning again to Alvin Thomas, of course, oh, yes, former, yes. Um, you know, general secretary of CSA, as you mentioned about workers day, workers holiday. And I know that the unions have been trying, trying, uh, trying, trying to get something going. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it used to be a very big event. I mean, you know, that lady, um, you know, there was, was a day the unions would celebrate and I'm not even sure if people recognize what the mm. midday holiday lot, is no, about. A lot of people don't. A lot of people <laughs> you don't. Know? Um, people. So it's mm. unfortunate mm. to really hope the unions can get it together and mm. probably have some event for you again. I know mm. they're trying. 
Yeah, man. Back Let's in the day, there'll be, a, there'll be a huge rally, you know, and you'd have speeches after speeches, and um, people would just, you know, energized. But yeah. um, things are different. Things are so different. The things are so different. Mm-hmm. If you try to organize well, I mean, it's already gone. You can organize it again because by the time you come out jazz and crayon, all you're in trouble. <laughs> but at the same time, you need yeah. to recognize yeah. what that day is and why that day is special mm-hmm. for us and why it's a holiday. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, um, you young leaders, Let's try yeah, something. I agree. Yeah, I agree. So, Nigel, there was um, also a well-put-together event um, in tribute to Ophelia, La Grande Dame. Very lovely event. And um, there are other fringe events, as I said. But we really um, have to celebrate the achievements of Ophelia in particular. Ophelia has done and continues to do so much. And it was really wonderful to see her being recognized and um, lovely. I, I just have to say yes. that, Nigel. And, you know, congrats to, you know, I mean, to all the performers and those who celebrated her at the RS process, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Great event, as you mentioned, yes, and yeah. all the performers did exceptionally well. Yeah, um, you know, and Ophelia, my dear, congratulations again. You deserve everything and more. Yeah. So this was your moment. I hope you enjoyed it and celebrated it and you remember it. Mm-hmm. And um, appreciate it as well, yeah. you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I love how the Springe events are, 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 are being able to form part of the main events. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. it's like a nice build-up. And it. I think what happened at the RAS process was really a nice build-up. I think Mikel had something as well at Fort Young. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, that too, helping to build the event. So it's, 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 it's a nice way of organizing it. I love yes, it. yes. So it's all systems go. I was on with... Um, with Colin Piper not too long ago, and he was talking about the preparation for the event. And um, Nigel, by the way, I mean, I saw some outfits, eh, and I would swear, Nigel, that I saw trees moving on dresses. <laughs> it's like just uh, they understood the assignment so well, Nigel, that even the the, the, the clothing, the, the, the dresses, the pantsuits, the rompers and all of that, you would swear wow. you see even rain falling from them. Seriously, Nigel, no exaggeration there. Well, that is lovely. That mm-hmm. is lovely when you can dress according to the theme. Right, you know, I mean, so that is that is that is creativity, and at the same time, I mean, for some people who are probably going to be for the first time daring to wear some things, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. um, I mean, I've seen over the years our men have stepped up oh, yes. in terms of fashion that they're not too scared of wearing the bright colors no. or wearing floral outfits mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So. Um, you know, big up to the men for getting on board mm-hmm. and um, trying to, well, they care how do we, man, eh? unfortunately. But then again, eh, Nigel, the, the men, their, their, their trousers are getting tighter. But oh, that's what not a, yes. not a program. Eh? Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, man, really tight, <laughs> Nigel. What? Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's the call. I used to know that the other thing when it was, um, was um, like a C- C- D, right? Yeah, and then um, yeah, C- 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 as something well. like that, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah when it's small at the, at, the, at the bottom part not the bell bottom one mm-hmm. <coughs> but yes yes they're getting tighter slim fit as as, as, as as we call it so um i guess the men are beginning to feel a lot more courageous yeah. so to those Very courageous, courageous men who are doing it um mm-hmm. you know i'm um, all the best mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah man i know we have a guest but nigel quickly the booyah is really boiling in the commonwealth it's bubbling it's really bubbling and at the same time we also have to sing the praises of our athletes at the alba games um, they are putting on a good show, so that's good. We have had, we have received quite a few medals, Nigel, even gold. Yes, wonderful, so wonderful. Sure. Yes, I mean I know. Um, so Delvin Esprit and the oh, Domino team. he was all smiles. Yeah. He was all. Smiles. Yes, could, he was all smiles at that gold winning medal. gold, yeah. female, mm-hmm. female team winning all gold, and I, I know. Um, my namesake Nigel did pretty well. Oh in yes, chairs. Nigel Francis. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. 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 Oh, when you have a name like Apple. Nigel Francis, you have to do. You have to do well. Eh? You have to do well. Please, you have man. to do well, Come and you on, have to represent. You have to represent. You know? you know? <laughs> so. And of course, our boxing guy um, um, is it Daniel or Donald. I think. Or I don't remember the exact John name, Charles. but Delroy pretty John well. Charles, I think yes, Delroy John Charles. Yeah. Yes, he's right. And some of our right. other um, athletes, mm-hmm. you know, making it to the finals mm-hmm. um, in, the, in, in some of the track events. So doing pretty well. Congratulations to them. Continue doing well. It's a good mm-hmm. ground. It's a good actually training ground for what is to come for them. Oh, definitely. You know, for the other events. So definitely. congratulations yeah, to the all the sporting mm-hmm. associations that were preparing them. Yeah. You know? Definitely.
Nigel, by the way, quickly, I really have to um, shout out Chills Joe, um, Alvin Ibrahim. By the way, we have to warn Al Alvin Ibrahim with me. Eh? Nigel, he have that SMA thing locked down. And he, Nigel, when you left last week, he's sending me a lot of messages. We too. Oh, you, gong na de, me, is that? It's Gong Nadi, Nigel. Yeah, yeah, you know, you have already? Gong Nadi. Yeah, you got Norin, Norin is Gong Nadi, the correct word. Norin will tell us. Yeah, man. <laughs> so let's shout out Norin as well. Um, Boju, <laughs> Norin, Vado, Carl Kofi, James, Winnie Green, Rosalind Severe, Wogan Nigel. There's a Thai Francis, um, Bernie T, um, Sandra Luke, Julie London. You mentioned Snapper, Muriel Geese, Jennifer in Goodwill. She's the mom of the signal band player and she always listens and she loves it. Nigel, Eva Francis as well, Sonia Williams. Nigel, help me because I know you have a lot of names as well. Ermin Roy always listens. Well, it's, it's, it's so many, so yeah. many. Let's say Eva, um, good morning to Eva as well. Again, in tech in, in Houston, doing the you know, association, always doing what they have to do. Oh, yes, yeah. Um, you know, so, and of course, Anne Marie Lauren Richards, good morning to you. You and Fred continue to do what you have to do mm -hmm. um kofi i'm not sure i I'm, i think your your, your daughter's uh, daughter was involved in some school um play or school musical i hope that went well for you guys um and for her um you know we haven't heard from terry and bino for a while yes but i get what terry and i hope you good I, I get you yeah. you yeah, I, I, yes. At times she's very busy, so she lets me know she's yes, very busy. Yes, so she yes. will look at Certainly it. Out. recognize that, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. Um who's that? I think um Sherry will want to tell us make sure we say congratulations to um Daniel. Let me let me see if I can get that. You see, sometimes you have to go from one book to the next to get the message. So let me see if I can read quickly what she say. Mm -hmm. Congratulations to um Danison um Matteo. How do you pronounce his last name? Mahoti or something like that? Um, so Mahote, after graduating yes, this week. I think it's Mahote, yes, yes. Mahote, yes, graduating mm -hmm. this week um, from the University of South Florida. All right, so congratulations to you, my brother. Of course, he was involved in uh, the Olympics as well. So, you know, continue doing well. Mm -hmm. um, continue building your strength and, and, and your skill sets. Amen. So we can, you can represent us at some points, yes. Mm -hmm. So, Nigel, Norin is saying when someone is jeering at you, it's gong na day. So okay, let us give, okay. let us give, uh, well, I will, I want to give um, Alvin a, de a demerit. I know you'll not agree that SMA thing in you as well, but it's okay. Mm, I'll get my troops. <laughs> Thank you, Alvin, for holding mm. down SMA last week <laughs> in my absence. Mm. Um, we appreciate that. We appreciate that. Um, to all the DGS students, continue to, you know, to be there, to mm -hmm. support. <laughs> yeah, man, yeah, man. Yeah. Talking, about been DGS, been been talking about DGS, Nigel, some students left school yesterday and DGS was ah. out. And Nigel, something about the, the writing on shirts. I know we have discussed that in a past program sometime last year, but Nigel, it's, it's getting worse. Eh? Not only writings, there are drawings as well. I know, you know what days we also had our fun, but Nigel, them days there, hmm. hmm. The Man. kinds of drawings and writings you see in. So I met a group of three and they wanted me to write something on the shirt. And, and look at me, old school, the um writing like success in your endeavors and things like that and they were like okay <laughs> nigel i got a little space to scribble my writing so i just put success in your endeavors but um you know my eyes were straight the wrong nigel how are we <laughs> yes some of the other phrases that you saw here you were like mm. i don't think i can i can be proud of putting mine right there yeah. i have to put it in the corner somewhere mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yes 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 um i know it's uh, it's it's become almost like a tradition now to, you know to do the writings yes. on the shirts and oh, yes, so on yes um but and you have to be careful yeah, of your writing yeah, on them yeah these shirts would have a memories. special print a special print i saw some i saw some students in a pink blazer very lovely very lovely i must say but sometimes the writing can be a lot but Mm. Yes, 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 yes. So you mean all the so the so they've already getting ready for what CXC is coming oh, up yes. soon? Oh yes, oh yes, yes. oh yes, okay. yes. And then of course after the CXC examinations, you would have the um the graduation ceremonies. So there's a lot happening. Any okay? okay. Uh, any of your little ones doing CXC? No, yeah. No, so no. Okay, um, okay. Yeah, one is at college living. Well, one is graduating this year from the college, and um, yeah. Okay, Nigel, we have a guest then. We, we do have a guest. We do have a guest. Yeah. And, and I'm happy to see that, you know, some members of the Dominic uh, Sifu Call Alum ah, Alumni yeah. Association nice. have joined. I, I, I like you that. Know, so, um, yes. Uh, Wayne, good morning. Mm -hmm. Thanks for joining in. Thanks for taking the invitation. As you know, you know, Sifu Call Alumni Association, one of the premier organizations mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. kind of handling um, 
the dialysis uh, yeah. machines. There's a dialysis they've already, they've already, of that. Yes, they've already donated too. two of those machines and a water treatment um, device and, and, and chairs and so to Dominica. So it's timely that our guest is going to be here in a few. And of course, the Sifakol Alumni Association being part of that. So yeah. great. Yeah. So let's welcome our guest, Nigel Lander Bruno. And he is the longest surviving dialysis patient in Dominica. But there's a lot more to Lander Bruno that we really want to find out. We want to know a lot about Lander Bruno, who he is really, before we can get to that stage in, in terms of dialysis, you know, kidney treatment. Um, since last year, I was making um, arrangements to have him on. It never really um, materialized, but I'm happy that we have him on now. You know, sometimes the universe speaks to us and we just have to listen. So I think now is a good time, especially as um, Nigel, he'll tell us later on that he is... Uh, traveling soon to receive a um, kidney transplant. He'll tell us about that. So it is really a pleasure to have uh, Lando Bruno on. Nigel, let, let's join him now. He's in studio too and he's ready. So Nigel, he's yes. ready. Yes, they, yes. They, um, he's ready. So Nigel, good, morning to you. good morning to you, my brother. Welcome and thank you for being part of Connecting the Dots and for willing to share your story and inspire others and share with others and help others and all that sort of thing. So um, welcome. Nice to connect with you. Good morning, Nigel. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Dominica. Good morning, the world. Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. Well, as you know, my name is Lando Bruno. I'm a dialysis patient for the past, for about 23 years now. And I have been on dialysis um, not doing too bad as a dialysis patient. I'm, I also was a bus driver. My, I from Woodford Hill um, originally. My father from Woodford Hill, my mother from Wesley. I currently live at Postmouth, Chance Postmouth. So um, that's basically it about uh, my background and where I live. Uh, from. What? Really? Nigel, he said that's basically I, I it. Mean, I don't understand. That is it. That is it. You probably don't understand how we just connect. Mm. <laughs> okay, so I know that cannot be the body background. You no, have no, no, so no, much no. more to tell us, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, I have more. Yeah. So I mean, yes, let's let's try and take it back before we get into you know your bus driver days and you know dialysis and everything else. Um, you kind of mentioned briefly you're from the Portsmouth area, so um, I reside in Portsmouth. I from reside in Portsmouth. What part of Dominic are you originally from? I from Woodford Hill. My father from Woodford Wood Hill and my mother from Wesley. Okay, Wood for the land. Okay, perfect. All right. So Alex tell us a little bit about Alex growing Bruno up. Cousin. Go ahead, go ahead. Oh, he said Alex Bruno is his cousin. Oh, Alex Bruno is hey, Alex so Good morning Fred. to you, Alex. I'm Alex trying to first drop that, Fred. Day. Good morning mm. to you. Yes, nice to know. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. So tell us a little bit about, I mean, Wood for the University. What do you remember growing up in Wood for the University? What are some of the things you remember? I remember so many things. I remember running about in the, going to the river every Saturday. Mm. Beef and food. <laughs> I remember picking um going to look for mango to eat. I remember catching bird. I remember so many things. Wesley was Wesley mold me and bring me up as a decent young person. Um until um two thousand when that um things happened to mm. me. But we'll get Wesley to that. I from we'll get we'll get, yes, we'll get yes, to that. Yes. Nigel he said he, he remember um catching birds. Bird. Nigel you ever ate some bird roasted Tried. bird? <laughs> <laughs> yes sir boy we did things we nowadays <laughs> Malfini <laughs> and then you call a catapol a catapol yes a catapol yes. yes. mm. yes. okay yes. Mm. yes 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 of course what you call a slingshot but of course yeah. you're kind of poor so yes. Um, you'd be able to aim at that and, and used, let it go. Do, let it fly. We used to make trap. We used to make trap to catch them. We trap and put right fig on the end of the trap. So when the when the when the bird land on the right fig, they they would just catch one time and skin our bird and roast <laughs> that. Put salt and lime and thing on that pepper. Me, I would never eat that. that. No, I, I mean, I super <laughs> taking the whole thing. I could never use the catapult and all of that. So I would be in the area, but eat that. Mm -mm. <laughs> mm -mm. I eat plenty birds in my life. <laughs> what? <laughs> Nigel, you eat birds? <laughs> <laughs> I try, I try not to answer that. But <laughs> <laughs> what? I think that was a favorite pastime, put it that way. Yeah, man. That was um, of many mm. people, well, I don't want to say many people, but uh, quite a bit of young people um, mm. would have probably gone through that um, as a pastime. 
um, right there on the spot. You would cook it and you know and, and, and have it right there, which was which was good, which was which was because I was celebrating your catch, right? I mean, and the yes. would be happy that I was their catch that day, and they would you know enjoy that. Yes. Yes, and for those of you who say one who want to know how come I dress so today, I'm just getting ready for the Creole and Jazz yes, weekend, you know. So um, I have my outfit ready, so that's just one of them. You're so yes, um, good for the Wesley growing up. So you went to you went to um, how you call it primary school and so I went for to the primary school. Was I never go further than primary. Okay, so so but but you did primary in Wesley and Woodford. I did primary in Woodford till first, and then okay. I went to Wesley with mommy, and it's still okay. until I I I leave school at the age of fifteen. Okay, all right, okay, okay. Now during that time in school, were you like involved in other things like in sports, or were you well, just like yes, a troublesome guy running around? I used to play like sports, um, football and cricket, mm. but I never do much of that because I was. Um, in more in the agriculture part of it, um, mm. like going in the garden with my family and and the flower fig and I was a mm. boxer, boxing fig and thing and the them time the banners was, um, they go every 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 two days a week or three days a week we have to go in the garden and the flower and sleeve and mm. yeah. So I was more after I finished school, I more do my gardening part of it. Well, what was school like? What are your fondest memories of school? <sighs> Um, more um, sports in um, like more like playing the f- football, cricket, okay, okay. and thing like that. Mm-hmm. Um, you used to sing at school as well. Not really. No. Okay, I just wanted you to sing to us, but okay. No. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but, oh, that's, yeah, that's correct, you know, as Alvino saying, the CKA used to call them things. Right, yes. CKA and Malfi. CKA, and man. Them. Yes, 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 yes. CKA. That's CKA. CKA. That's, that was a bird. I was trying to remember the name of that. Yes, CKA. CKA. Mm-hmm. So you'd have it roasted. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so um, what about what about some of the other guys in, in, in primary school with you, um, Do you remember, I mean, some of your friends that were in primary school with you? Well, there was a lot of most, most of them migrated. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. There's Cohen Prosper, he's a young partner. We, we went to school together. Every time we go into school, he used to come and call me at home. And um, we had a whistle, we said, ooh, 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 <laughs> to know that we come mm-hmm. in and call each other. Mm-hmm. And then I have um, some other guys that in the U.S. and all around the, the place. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, some very good friends. But all right. Most of them is old. What, so what about, like, the community? I mean, did you, like, was it a situation where the elderly, like meaning like, you know, the, the older people in the community, they could, you know, discipline you if you if you if you were not doing well? Was that was that a situation? Did you get any beatings from other people besides your, your parents? Not really, but they used to report to mommy often. <laughs> <laughs> Especially anytime they see us on the road we used to run. Mm. Anytime, they see, anytime I see somebody who land me, but we never used to curse or Thing around people, I mm-hmm. grew up in that way where I wasn't cursing much or, mm-hmm. or trying to do something that the elderly would really attack me or get at me or something. I used to try my best to be calm and easy as possible. Mm-hmm. You used to go down to Roso very often in those days, or no, what no. was it like? <laughs> no, the first time I go to Roso, I was frightened, <laughs> even postmouth. The first You're time frightened. I go postmouth, uh-huh. it's in the 90, early 90, 90s late 80s mm-hmm. and when i see the thing they used to carry the, the bananas on the geese boat coming from under the indian river i say oh god only look at a see caterpillar you know they have the little yellow thing where the the person will stay to drive the so i saw and it, it was flat so i i saw that sea caterpillar uh, oh a sea caterpillar oh <laughs> interesting nigel yeah man interesting <laughs> That's nice. I like that. I mm. like that. The stick at a pillar, yes. <laughs> that was the kind of frightening thing for you, right? Yes, you know, making a gag, 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 Yes, 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 Seriously. and then seeing it for the first time, yeah. I mean, oh, you're yes. probably oh, yes. amazed at that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. so, 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 from, I mean, okay, so, when did you move to Portsmouth? 
I moved to Portsmouth in uh, 94, 93 or 94, I think. I was, I was, I was um, in and out of Portsmouth because my sisters down there and brothers, so I used to be down there with them. And then in 1999, I was working at MNR Postmouth, so I just go down Postmouth and live at that time. After I get kidney problem in 2000, I just stay Postmouth until I, be, I buy my land and I build my house, something like that. Okay. okay. So, mm -hmm. so we, we, we're getting closer to 2000, which is mm -hmm. when you, you, know, you, you, you will tell us what happened and how that came about and all the rest of it. Um, you can share that story so you can inspire others. Yeah. Um, so prior to 2000, so once you, you know, you left school, you with your binders and so on, were you just doing all your gardening only or did you work anywhere else? I work, I work with, um, I wasn't doing my own farming. I was working with a man they call it, it's a Emlo Timothy in Wesley. And um, Mom Irene, Miss Irene Benjamin, she was um, like my mother. Mm -hmm. And then I used to do other chores with other farmers in the in the area, like people that want me to box for them because I was a boxer. People that used to box bananas and so so I used to do that. So somebody want to do for those for, for for those who don't know much about the farming thing, if you say you're a boxer, they mm -hmm. might think you should yeah. be representing Dominican boxing. No. <laughs> so when you say you're a boxer, what what what, what do you mean? I used to be packing the fig in the the bananas in the boxes. Okay. So I used to call them a boxer. Mm. Interesting. And yeah. then you have to put the plastic over it? Yes, over you have it. to put the plastic, then you put in the liner. They have so they, they um they have a a small um paper you put in to separate the the banners for them to That's a bruise touch or each other so, and okay. bruise. Mm. And then you pack in that nicely and you mm -hmm. So how do you know the pack goes in the box? Like do you know like it's, it's like a hand of ten and then you put yeah. the paper another hand of ten, you put the how do you go about it? What's the well, process? We are this, well, you did take that when you were at the time, when you, um, when the, the, the selector, the person that's selecting the bananas on the tree, when they cut it, they have to cluster it, remove the old ones, the, what those are maybe scratch up and thing, mm -hmm. and then cluster it properly. So as they, when they're on the table, all of them is on the table in front of you. So when they're on the table, by just watching them, you know, which one fit in here, which one fit in there. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. Wow. Yeah. You see, I don't know. There's, 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 there's a morning. science behind it. Oh, yes. There's a whole process. Wow. And they're just putting it in the box and you mm. and that's it. And you and you and you and you send you, you send it. Correct. You have to get the correct size so you will not get it scratching up or bruising up. Mm -hmm. Um, when you put it in the box, so you know this one that for for you need that for grain to fit that to tighten up because you have to add the box tight. So when it move, 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 it will not mm -hmm. um bruise or mm -hmm. scratch up. Um, Interesting. Like, and it will be had to be presented properly. Interesting, Nigel, and we did it right for many years because, of course, you know, bananas was king, you know, back yeah. in the day. So we'd have done this right for many years and until, I, of and course, I, box that I do that for many years. Too, yeah, many, many until, years. of course, you know, we were kicking at gold. The gold post was being shifted, and regulations came on. In, but it's really interesting, Nigel, you know, how he was involved in bananas. And yes, bananas yes, and, and, and the process as it was in boxing it. Yeah, boxing you it, know? packing it properly. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then after after the boxing, I mean, <laughs> boxing, right? After oh, okay. <laughs> after the boxing, then what happens? What's the next part of the process? Take so so what, what I want to do, Lando, is for those for those who might not know what's involved in yeah, although we're yes. here to talk about dialysis yes. and, yeah, yeah. and your current situation, but it's but, interesting yeah. that we get, we get an opportunity to talk to someone who's been doing the farming so kind of give us the process. I mean, from cutting down the banana to, 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 to where it's, 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 it's packed and ready to be shipped. What was the process? Well, well, it's a long process, you know, because we had the first set of bananas I started is when they had the crown pad. Okay? Mm -hmm. And then they start to wash it, to start to bring it in the shed and then wash it, put it on, on a table. So wash it just on the water, nothing else, just you, water? They used to have a thing they call it funga flu. Okay. It's to maybe to maybe preserve the to maybe um, stop it from the the um what they call it the stain is coming out from. Mm. The, okay. Yes, fungal mm. flow. So we should dip it in. We just put the fungal put it just soak in the fungal flow, and then we just take it and we just um lift it up like drain, mm -hmm. and then put it on the table so it drain out nice. Mm -hmm. Don't throw no water on it, and then you put it in the you back. Mm -hmm. Box it in the boxes. Mm -hmm. And some of us will take that for granted in Nigel. You have bananas on your yes. hands and you just eat it. But when you understand, you know what process it has to go through to get to your plates to enjoy it so much. 
Wow. That's it. That's it. That's it. So we can better appreciate what our farmers have to do mm -hmm. to make sure you get, you know, some good bananas. Yeah. And, and so we can appreciate that long process and that meticulous mm -hmm. process that one has to go through to make sure it's good mm -hmm. yes. for when you get it shipped, you know? Mm -hmm. Yes. So you did all of that, um, and then, of course, um, you then moved into, you then moved to Porto. So during that time, you were doing the, 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 um, the farming, you were still living in Wesley, right? I was living in Wesley, but I was in out of Portsmouth because my my sisters and I was Portsmouth. So no one then I used to go Portsmouth, spend time and things like that. But I was in and out. Mm. I was living in Wesley until the 1999, 2000. So you were in okay. the north and the northeast. Yes. Interesting. Yes, the northeast people. Good morning to you, northeast people. And by you know? the way, May Fest is happening, Nigel, this weekend. Uh, oh, yes, May is Fest is on. That's true. That's true. Yes, yeah, yes. They have some big competition. Too. Yes, some pageant or something. Yes, was that last yeah. night or well, today? Last night was in Granfo because Granfo too is celebrating Achievement Day. So there yes, a lot of has this one. So congratulations to yeah. the winner for the Miss White City. Mm -hmm. I forgot her name. I forgot her name. But congratulations well. to you um, mm -hmm. on that. Mm -hmm. So, 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 Landa, 1999. Um, 2000 i guess i wonder we can go to his current situation yeah, yeah, yeah. um tell us what happened in in 2000 mm -hmm. okay we'll go back to 99 okay 99 okay, okay. 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 from 1999 i was um i was living in woodford hill i stayed there for about a year and then i would get a job by emanar driving for them and postmove that's emanar trading emanar trading in postmove mm -hmm. and then one day, I felt like my head reeling me. I was trying to, ch to change a chalk tire. Mm -hmm. And I feel my head like my head spinning. spinning. So I say, boy, I'm not feeling well. So I say, let me go by the hospital. I post but and check my pressure. So I went up. I take the chalk and I go by the hospital. I was driving a chalk. And when I went up by the hospital, the pressure was 200 and something over one something. So I, the doctor tell me that I cannot go anywhere. I have to, to rest. So I called the uh, company to come for the chalk and I stay up there and, and rest for two hours. After the two hours, they give me a tablet, a uh, pressure tablet to take. And then they send me home for two weeks to rest. After the two weeks, I rest and then I go back post more to check my pressure again. But were you feeling the headaches during that time though when you were resting? I was feeling the headache, but it wasn't severe. Okay. It was mm -hmm. kind of off and on. Mm -hmm. But I used to um, have an, uh, my, something they call migraine headache for many, 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 many years before. Many years, I always have that headache troubling me mm -hmm. for many years. So when I went to post mode, um, back to post mode to check my pressure, the doctor tell me my pressure is still high. So I tell mm -hmm. him I just build my home. I just, um, I don't have no stress. So why my pressure should be high? So I want to do an investigation to find out why that caused my pressure to be high. I was young, 25 years, young boy. Um, so I tell him I want to um, check my pressure. So I want to investigate to find out why that caused my pressure to be high. He sent me and do a blood test in the Rose, in the Princess Margaret Hospital. Mm -hmm. When after I did the blood test, I was on my way up to Woodford Hill. The nurses them when I pass uh, a nurse, um, good family friends of ours. She called me and she tell me that she see I pass, come back in the Margaret Hospital because they want to see me. When she tell me that, <laughs> hmm. I say, I just got and do a blood test. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. She want to, Dr. Dennis want to see me again. Hmm. <laughs> I say, I catch it, man. <laughs> catch it? What, what, what was going like on that? around that time? I wonder what you are you watching me like that? I catch it. No, so I'm trying to understand, so I'm waiting for the rest to understand why you catch it. Eh? <laughs> I said, yes. remember what was going on around that time, the, I thought I think yes. I get the virus. Ah, okay, all right. Well, that's like snowy boy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. I mean, we can laugh about it because yeah, yeah. of the sense that, I mean, now we've grown mm -hmm. to know how mm -hmm. to deal with situations, yes, you know yes. what I mean? So but I at I that time, that was like a popular yes, phrase yes, kind yes, of thing, yes, right? Yes. Yes. Before time, we used to say, any time you make a blood test and the doctor call you back, mm -hmm. is the virus you have? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so I thought, I tell my partner I had any time, I think I get the, I got the virus. So I, I, I went to the hospital in Margaret and checked them. There was a doctor, the doctor Dupi. She have a paper in her hand and she watching me, she watching my foot, she watching the paper, she checking. So I tell her, what's going on, what's happening? But I was afraid. 
So I said that she tell me that my both kidneys not functioning properly. They gone. Wow. She told me 75% of my both kidneys gone. I started to cry. So I said, I'm going to die. She told me, no, you're not going to die. We're going to take care of you. We're going to give you treatment. And you were 25 at that time? I was 25 mm -hmm. in my prime. So when they sent me down to Roso in the, on the ward, and... They the same day, the same day, the same day. Yes, she tell me I cannot go home. But yeah. they should give you more advice in terms of what you have to do and things like she that. She tell me they're going to put me on dialysis. So I, I never know what is dialysis all about. The only thing she say is that we go, we're going to treat you. We're going to put you on dialysis. But I never know what dialysis is all about. So when I go on the ward and then people start to come and see me and thing and start to tell me so many things, so many things. People tell me a lot of stuff that could make me be f be just just. Go, just die just like that. Because but but but, but, but Langa, just 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 quickly though, because you say that when she, when she gave you the result, she was looking at your foot and looking at mm -hmm. you, looking at mm -hmm. your feet, looking at you. What was what what was your feet different she, in any way? She was looking for swelling. Okay. Well was there was there swelling? No, or? there was no swelling. She was looking for swelling in my lower limbs because that's what she told me. She was looking to see if I have any swelling. Because normally when your kidney not functioning you start to see your foot swelling in your lower um like your ankle and thing like that to your lower foot your mm -hmm. your instep and thing so she was looking for that but there was no swelling in my in my from the time okay. i started dialysis from the time i get the kidney problem i stay on the ward for a little while and there was no swelling mm -hmm. okay so that's what she was looking for and all that time you were having the headache still um yes yes hmm. yeah. all right so so you're on the ward um they, they send you to the ward right away immediately mm. up to the hospital yeah and what's going through your mind mm. what's happening why is he on the ward what are you telling yourself i thought i was going to die mm -hmm. in the first beginning in the first maybe week or two because so um we had a first the first person i know with kidney problem that had kidney problem that lady from wesley and she died she never she never lasts Okay? Mm. She died and that was somewhere 89, 90, 88, 89, around them time. Mm -hmm. So all these things were going through your mind and people so, would tell you things as well because people would visit you. And they they, they, they have no um, knowledge of what kidney problem and them things they're all about because um, people always, all know, people believe as long as you have kidney problem, mm -hmm. that's okay. it. Understand? So the what you're getting back from the public is like kidney problem or Oh, them think that so it's death. It's like you're going to die. It's like mm. you so so badly off that you will die. Wow. Naturally, you know what I remember? She said this. I remember the discussion we had on the 1963 fire, when yes. um when um Rupert Land said that mm -hmm. uh, he just wanted to come out from the hospital because people were visiting him, you know, and saying things like alas, you know, and it, it was really a lot for him. On yeah. His bed. Sometimes sometimes visits by you know relatives and yeah. friends and so on sometimes it can be more kind of a harmful if you want yeah. to put it that way than mm -hmm. to build you up because and, and again something because of ignorance they're not sure what mm -hmm. they, 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 they don't know that much about the particular illness or disease so they just keep saying all kinds of stuff from what they might have read or heard or seen from other people and so on so yeah i could well imagine that Landa. so you were in the hospital initially um so what happened over the next couple of days once once well, you were admitted? Um, then doctors um, start to do the tests and do a couple of things after. Do you remember which doctors were the names of the doctors at that time? Dr. Jennifer there, Elwin. The My favorite doctor, Je Dr. Jennifer Elwin. Okay. She was the one that worked with me um, from the time I started. So the time I reached on the ward. And she really, trust me, she really did a good job with me. Mm -hmm. She helped me a lot. She, gave me, she, uh, she always listened to me when I call her to ask. And I like to ask questions. Mm -hmm. I want. I want. Always want to know what is the next step. Mm -hmm. If you give me a tablet, I want to know what is the side effect. What is going mm -hmm. to do to me? Mm -hmm. And she always listened to me, and she always make me. I. I imagine I was her patient at her private office because that was. I feel confidence with her. So after I come out from dialysis, anytime I have any checkup to do, I go in her private office to do it. Mm -hmm. That so patient. She was. She did. Yeah, Doctor Jennifer Elwin. Really she retired important. now, but she was a very. She, she really did, did her best with, with, with us in dialysis. And me, I can testify 
that she did a lot for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know she was honored recently um, when we had the women's um, um, International Day of Women. So, you know, hey, big up to you, Dr. Jennifer Elwin. Mm-hmm. You've done so much mm-hmm. for Dominica in yeah. initial stages mm-hmm. when we were not that far advanced as it relates to, you know, I mean, um, illnesses related to the kidney and so on. So, yes, um, we appreciate that. So, 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 Lander, how long did you, what, what, what was it still like at the hospital? Was it for a week, two weeks? I a stayed month? at the uh, hospital for about uh, a month. And then I traveled to Guadeloupe. She told me that her doctor Elwin told me I had to go to Guadeloupe to put a, a fistula to start dialysis. Explain what the fistula is. The fistula is, uh, what they do? Um, can I show? But of course, um, people yes, are at this. for those who you yes, know will be able to see what the experience is like. You see, ah, you see what we have there? Oh, that's a fish. That's my vein. Ah. So what they do? They make a small surgery, right there, and they attach they attach the main vein to the heart, <coughs> mm-hmm. and they pulse together. So the main vein is to flow. You're using it to flow the blood from the heart to the machine and from the machine back to the to the body and then they're using the, the paws for a pump so you're hearing a boom boom and a shh boom boom shh. so that is what it that is what it, it is a small surgery not a big thing it's a small one now you see now i have two lumps mm-hmm. two set of lumps on my hand mm-hmm. this one is the first one it died it it not it have no the the it 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 have no use right now it's not working this one is the second one that dr kelsick put for me dr wills kelsick son he died somewhere by the by the pot and he did this one for me some 12 years 12 or 13 years ago okay mm-hmm. and it's the same process mm-hmm. so that is what i did this one lasts me 17 years and this one have me going for a little while now Mm, so that's wow. what it's okay. about. Mm-hmm. But but uh, know, this is... that that fistula is the te- is the um the permanent one. That's this one is the one for long term. Now if when you get kidney problem, they put a, a, a catheter, a shunt, a catheter in your neck or by your grind. So that is for no for no. So if in case you're in an emergency stage. So in your neck and then by your groin area. If it, if it, you cannot get it there, they can put it by your grind area. But that is for the no for no. Like if in case you emergency that you need, you need the dialysis, no. So the doctors will run go and they'll put that for you. No, that that procedure can be done here, but this one on my hand cannot be done here. Mm. This one on my hand can be done. Um, well, so normally um, lately we had a doctor coming from Saint Lucia doing it for the patients, but um, the first the one for the catheter, the doctor can do it here, Doctor James. So. Or the other doctors mm-hmm. that can do it, they would they doing it here, but that is the emergency mm-hmm. part of it. Okay, but what were you at that time strong enough to to cope to deal with the disease? Um, at the time when you saw what the fistula had done in terms of the like the lumps, um, how did you feel at, at that time? Well, the thing is that when I went to Guadeloupe, they give me a sort of counseling, mm-hmm. step by step. Take care of yourself. Eat well. Take care of your hand. Your, use your hand as your baby. Um, and those things. So um, when I come back in Dominica to continue my treatment, as I already informed of the different and the different stages I have to go through, the different changes your body, my body will be taking up by that time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What about what about the reaction of, 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 of family, friends and so on to your news and of course to um to that surgery and everything else? How did they take it? Well, um as every other thing concerning that medical condition, people don't take it nicely. People don't take it like it's a Sin is not like is norm. Um, you is sick or you people taking it like him. Um, you sick, 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 and you're going to die. You understand? So 
they will treat you as that kind of a thing, like how you hold an egg. Like, don't, don't push him, don't touch him too hard. And those things, they're so. So, <laughs> the, um, be, and I more believe the reason why that happens is because of the education part of it. You understand? We are not educated in that, in, in most of the medical conditions that people will be facing. You understand? Mm -hmm. So, if you have the education part of it going on, people will know to treat you different or to deliver you different. The education, yes, about yes, education. That is, that is, and again, it will be go back to the point here. You know, sometimes because of your, you know, your ignorance of the situation, your lack of knowledge yeah. of what it is, you end up saying certain things or treating people a different way because you know, you know, you you don't know. You mean well, <laughs> but you don't know how to actually do it because you don't know much about the the, the particular illness that yeah. you're dealing with. Um, so, Lander, for those who don't have an idea or give us a general idea, what's involved? in a dialysis session mm -hmm. well a dialysis session involving um when you went to dialysis then you 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 have a, you have a scale the first step you went to step on the scale you take your weight if your your dry weight before you started dialysis was 61 kg 61 kilos when mm -hmm. you started when you started dialysis remember your body not not letting go the amount of toxin and amount of fluid that you put in. So it will stay in your body and make, make you kind of heavy, make you kind of build up. So what you do, you go on the scale to find out what's your weight. So if, you're, if you go on the scale and you weigh, um, your dry weight is 61 kilos and you weigh 65, then the nurses have to calculate that to bring you down back to 61 kilos because they want to bring you back down to your dry weight, to your normal weight. So then they bring you to the machine. They put you to sit down on your chair. They ask you to sit. Then they ask you to, then they prepare your packs and your, your, your machine and everything for you. And then they set you up on the machine. With the catheter, with the fistula, we have needles, big needles, good sized needles. And we have um, tubing. So the tubing is connected to the machine with an artificial kidney, what you call a dialyzer. And they put the first nigga want to take out the blood from your body and send it to the dialyzer, to the tube into the dialyzer. So when it, when it comes from the end, other end of the dialyzer, then they connect the other tube in to the other nigga. So it's two niggas. Want to take the blood, want to take the blood off from your body and want to put the blood in back to your body. And these are two so, big needles, you say, right? Yes, it's big niggas. Yes. Yes. I will never afraid of needles, so that's why she's asking. Mm. So. Not really, though. Not really. So, oh, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. so you, 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 they, they don't put you to sleep or knock you out or nothing like that. Hmm. You can be alert. You will, will be alert. You will be. You will know everything. You can just relax yourself. Well, me, I play my music, and I, I sing in. I free up myself. How long is that process for? Huh? How long? Well, some people take three and a half hours. Some take four hours, according to how toxin your body is or according to how much fluid you have to remove and some take two hours according to how your body can handle it. What's the time you took four hours? I took five hours in Guadeloupe one time. Mm. Yeah, I sleep for five hours mm -hmm. and I used to be taking four hours here but because um, um, I don't want to say I'm the best, I'm not the best <laughs> but because of how well I manage mm -hmm. my diet and mm -hmm. things like that, I take him three and a half hours now. Mm -hmm. So you're alone yeah. in a room or what is no, happening? No, the dialysis unit is a, is a white space. Okay, so you have so different you, people right now being we dialyzed are, at the same time. Uh, yes, you can see all the other patients. Although mm -hmm. there is one or two isolated, since the new hospital there is one or two isolated, there is two isolated places, like even in case you have medi other medical condition that they don't want you to, um, like when, they have the, when you had the um, COVID, they will put you in isolation mm -hmm. so that you will not mingle with the other okay. companies. So when you go to, to to your for your dialysis treatment, do you have to reach on an empty stomach? Do you have to be filled to the No. Resort? You have to eat. Okay. Because remember the emotion have to get something to work with. So you have to eat. What what what, what I particularly like um, um, um and and very um I want to say almost impressed <laughs> with, 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 with Landa is the way in which he's able to describe the process and to talk about all the medical things that's going on. 
Um, it almost feels like as if you're so, I don't want to say comfortable, but it almost feels like you are, um, like you've come to learn to accept your situation in that sense and you're able to share the information now with others who might be either going through it or who at some point might end up going through it. You, I mean, you're very, you're, you're very articulate about the whole oh, thing. Oh yes, very. Nigel, and so at some point I want him to tell us about what he went through as well and he's still going through because discrimination, he has received a lot of this. And a lot of that. I want him to talk about that as well. Oh, definitely, definitely, definitely. I mean, that's that's a, that's a part we have to talk about for sure. Yeah. Um, so, when you go through a dialysis session, um, once it's how 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 often is it something that you know you have to go every month, or is it when you feel a certain way, or how do you know when is your next session? That no, well, is um is every other day. Every every, okay. every other day, you have to go every other day. Some going Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Some going Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. So every other day you have to go for your treatment. And it's not okay. only happening here; it's happening around the world. What would have happened at times like, say, I'm Hurricane Maria? You know, times like that. Wow. When you have to go for dialysis treatment every after other after day. Hurricane Maria, I walked from Portsmouth to Roseau. You walked from Portsmouth to Roseau. Yes, because wow. road was blocked. Mm -hmm. Um, river was in the road. There was no transportation. You had to put yourself in a survival mood because you have oh. to survive. <laughs> so the Wednesday morning, the Wednesday morning when I, I get up from my bed, after when I go, I check my home. The, the Tuesday morning, I think, Maria happened the Monday, Monday night. Mm -hmm. And you'd have gone for your treatment on the Friday. Before? I want I dialyze the Monday. You dialyze the Monday. So Maria happened the Monday night. Okay. So All the right. Tuesday morning I went <laughs> down at my home to check my house to see what happened in the whole everything was flat. Everything was flat. I find my, my mattress by one on one my stretch. I find my <laughs> everything was just gone. All my clothes, everything these apply with also I had more with our wall foundation. And the toilet and bathroom wall, everything does go. So I think it's the Tuesday I walk, the Tuesday. After I go and I check the place and I realize that I lose everything. I don't, don't pick up nothing. I just turn my back. I say, I can really get, get more than that. So let me leave that alone. I just turn my back on all of everything. And I start to walk. I walk, I walk. I start to walk about after eight. When I reach Rosewood, it was after four o'clock in the afternoon. I had to climb up on mountain, climb up all about, and it's, and I I never eat. What I did, I buy a coke, and I sip on it. I buy a coke in Koliho, and I had a a white cloth, and the sun was hot, so I take the white cloth and I wet in it in the river. I, every time I pass on the road, and I wet in it and I put it over my head, for me not to get dehydrated. <laughs> What's a coke? Later on, I want to talk about diet. <laughs> But yes, Nigel, yes, wow. Coke is a part of your diet? It's not a part of oh, it. Oh, because I was wondering why. a bad part to... of the diet. That is a wrong part. <laughs> but it's the closest thing to me at the time. Right, right, right. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, man, this is this is, this is is very interesting, Landa, uh, in terms of, um, and I mean, quite a few people on the book page. Yes, on, Nigel, on the and we can use. Give an yes, idea as to what people are saying you know, and asking as well. Yes, yes, yes. You know, telling us how, you know, the Department of Health should use him as a spokesperson um, for those who have the disease so that they can feel uh, more comfortable. Um, yes, last, so, you know, I mean, some... Sorry for cutting. Well, last... No, go ahead. Last, um, sometime last month, I overheard uh, some person was supposed to be on dialysis and they backed down. They said they don't want to go on that. And I remember somewhere in 2001, a young man of friends of mine from Woodford Hill was supposed to dialyze. And he said he's not dialyzing, he's going to stay home. In two weeks he died. So there are people that are um, looking at the dialysis thing as a negative thing. Like any time, and I, 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 really would, I really would like, to, I, I would like to do it for free. Even case the Ministry of Health and Health Promotion, would like to have me to educate and sensitize people about what is kidney mm -hmm. problem and dialysis mm -hmm. all about, I would do it. I would have a problem in doing it. Because by the end of the day, it's not about me. It's about what God have me here for. 
I think God have a purpose for keeping me here for all that time. And I don't serve half of the purpose as yet. I need to save that purpose. Mm, right. And I believe the purpose is to educate and sensitize the public, not me alone. Because in, there is a lot of stigma and stigma about kidney problem and dialysis. Mm -hmm. That is why a lot of people die in. Last year, we had 40-something patients. Right now, we have about 31, something like that. Because in the public don't know much about what is dialysis about. So they helping to break the patients, the people, the clients down when it comes to that dialysis part of it. Mm -hmm. By the way, um, we can welcome calls, Nigel. 448-3284. 448-3281. You could also call us on 448-3279. The overseas line is 305-432-9744. Lando Bruno is our guest. Um, longest surviving dialysis patient in Dominica um, a little more than 22 years. Uh, tell us about, okay, someone is calling, Nigel. So let's take that call. We'll continue. Yes. You are on Connecting the Dots. Hello, go ahead. Good morning. To you as well. A very good program. Thank you. Um, I tuned in a little late, but I was very happy to hear my friend, Bruno. This is Dr. King, by the way. So, you heard um, that, Bruno? Dr. Dr. King. <laughs> oh, Dr. King, good morning, mm -hmm. good morning. Good morning, Bruno. I mean, he's such a model patient. I had the, um, what I would say, the pleasure of working with him as a patient, both as a junior doctor and then as a specialist in internal medicine because we did not have a nephrologist before. But thank God we have Dr. James and she's doing a super job. And I'm happy that she still has Bruno there with her. I'm so amazed he has come so far. He has been a model patient, like I say. And he's so informed, so knowledgeable. So I was very happy to hear him. So I really wanted to call this morning and tell Bruno congratulations. And I'm very happy that he will be willing to go out there and talk to other yeah. patients. Because sure. um, at the end of the day, um, sometimes they are scared. They don't know what the process is about. And when you have somebody that has experienced it for over 20 years, mm -hmm. it's it's really good that there's somebody there to be there with them along the way. Family support is important. Mm -hmm. um, and they being, you know, willing to go far because, like I say, it's not a death sentence. Kidney um, disease should not be a death sentence. Um, so dialysis is there and it's readily available. And uh, soon we will even have that um, service available at the New Marigot Hospital. So it's something to look for. But mm -hmm. most importantly, though, I would like the public to know that the prevention of kidney disease is even more important. Mm -hmm. And at this time, as the government of Dominica is trying to, you know, reduce NCDs, um, because the number one cause of, of kidney disease in Dominica is diabetes. So eating healthy, staying healthy, and preventing the disease is even more important now at this time. Mm -hmm. Um, so I just want to tell Dominicans, take care of yourself. We have this nature island. We have good food. Let's go out there and eat healthy, go on that healthy diet, your little exercise, and, you know, and pray for all of us here. But I mm -hmm. just wanted really, 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 Bruno, congratulations. You have done well and continue to do well. Thank well. you very much, Doc. Thank you. Thank you for, yes. for calling. And when you... I'm not sure at what point you joined listening, those listening now and viewing as well, but he said that he left school at the age of 15, primary school. And Nigel, when you hear him talking about diabetes and, oh boy, it's... it's yes, and, and the it's whole process and yeah. dialysis and the kidneys and everything. I mean, mm. you have really just... And, and I think you said it. You said you like to ask questions. So I think well, yes, it's probably because you were asking you have questions to. all through your, 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 your journey. Mm -hmm. That you're able to talk about it so you know I mean eloquently. Mm -hmm. What about the diet though? What, what? Well, the diet, the, as a dialysis patient, diet is is critical. Diet is the most important thing. Diet is what I will tell you how well you do as a dialysis patient and how how long you live as a dialysis patient. Because if your kidney can no longer produce or no longer um um pass all the waste and the toxin. Then when you put it inside your body, it's going to cause a poison to you because your body can no longer take mm -hmm. it away. Um, imagine, let's talk about that long holiday weekend that's coming up. Mm -hmm. And the patients, a dialysis patient dialyzed on Friday. 
No, his next patient, his next treatment is on Monday. On Monday again. Okay, let's take it from Saturday. You dialyze on Saturday and your treatment is on Tuesday. But you go down Creole, um, um, you go to an activity, one of the activities. You go to one of them the activities. Mm -hmm. And you eat your rye fig, high, high, high in potassium. You may drink a little of coconut water, checking that they go do you nothing. You eat potato salad or potato, whatever, they don't boil properly. That is more toxin. Then you drink a little tea, it's more toxin again. So everything you eat or drink, there is toxin in it. Even the water, there is toxin. So everything you have to eat or drink at a dialysis patient is proportion so that your body will have enough time because your body has to break it down in what your body wants to use up for itself. Mm -hmm. And if you're not an act activity person, that a person that ex exercising and sweating, and then you have to depend on the dialysis machine to remove that toxin, excess toxin, excess fluid, and excess salt from your blood because the, the kidney can no longer do that work. Then you poison. You dare. <coughs> Sorry. Mm -hmm. You dare. You sick. You have to end up maybe emergency hospital, emergency dialysis or something. So the I go to all that to tell you that as a dialysis patient, your diet is critical. Is that is what you have to look at most, especially with the local fruit juice and those things. So because it, I mean it's good for you, um, Ivona and um. For because in you have your two kidneys and they're working properly. But that dialysis patient that do have kidneys working properly, you have to depend on the dialysis machine to remove that to do that work for you. The machine, the kidney, the the artificial kidney, which is the dialyzer, will never do the work the kidney, normal kidney will be able to can do. So that is what mm -hmm, mm -hmm. is all about the diet part mm -hmm. of it. Mm. So as the yeah. So as the kidneys stop working, you have like an accumulation of what? Fluids of and toxin ex excess and salt. excess fluid mm -hmm. and thing. Your body started to reach sometime according to the amount of fluid you take. Your body retaining the fluid. That's where you see in swelling. That your foot swell big, your face swell, you swell in your hand, you swell, you swell in your stomach. Because your body can no longer get rid of it. So your body starts to retain it, starts to use it up for itself. And there where you see in the swelling. Mm -hmm. Wow, Nigel, I'm looking at the Facebook, um, a lot of suggestions, a lot of questions as well. Alvin is asking us to ask um, Lando Bruno if he has any career area he wishes to pursue, even in the dialysis area. So so let's answer that, because I really want to touch on the, the discrimination that you have uh, gone through. Say that again, I, I don't So yet. he was asking, um, any career area that you wish you, know, you wish to pursue, in, even in the dialysis area? Because you're, you're a spokesperson. You, you, you I would like to um, develop my skills in speaking and be a little more patient so mm -hmm. that I could um, um, articulate and talk to people more mm -hmm. better um, mm -hmm. in a more fashion manner like more calm and more humble that you could understand what I'm saying because in, I don't want to be to be complacent and say that I'm I, I good in everything no I would like to be a way that when I talk to somebody concerning to dialysis and kidney problem mm -hmm. Or any other part of it that they would be able to can understand me properly and do take offense of what I see. Okay, Nigel. And I think that's a good. I think that's a good area because, I, from what you, I mean, from what you've said so far and the way you've been saying it, I think you definitely have what it takes to be, um, you know, to be that spokesperson. Yeah. Um, because sometimes, you know, when we hear it from someone who's been through it and who can talk our own talk and who can share the information in simplicity as, you, as you're doing right now, sometimes it, 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 it can come across even better mm -hmm. than situations where you have the, you know, all the medical tools being used yeah, and people yeah. trying to figure it out. Yeah, you know? so you can break it down yeah. for us, yeah. Nice. Yes, yes. So, so, so I think you're yeah. doing an excellent job in that. Mm -hmm. But I think Ivona has been talking about something yes, and, and, Nigel, and something that you probably might have gone through. Oh, yes. Um, so, yes, Ivona. So, yeah, last year, I, I can recall last year having Lando Bruno on, on um, I think it was on Talking Point. I interviewed him. The association was just from the Dominica Dialysis Association, or they were in the process of putting things together. But anyway, I had him on. And uh, the conversation was going on all right because I was really amazed, you know, at what, you know, this young man has done 
since he, you know, he was diagnosed with, with, with kidney failure. But then he spoke about discrimination and what he's going through. So, so Landa, um, help us understand what you're going through. Yes, well, um, in the beginning when I started, um, when I come from Guadeloupe and I come down and I was in Dominica, I come to Dominica with, um, there was a lot of bad things saying about me and my treatment. Um, do you know, before, um, I get put down on buses already. Wow. Bus, bus driver never wanted, don't want to carry me hmm. because I am um, too sick. Passengers don't want to sit by me. Wow. I was, I come from dialysis one day and I was, I was sick at the time. I was really sick. I was working for Kane and I, I was going on a bus. It was late. It was after, after five in the afternoon. And I asked the bus driver. And you were going to Portsmouth? I was going to Portsmouth. Mm. I think I was going to Portsmouth or Woodfortil. I think Woodfortil. Mm -hmm. And uh, I asked a, a bus driver. And that's a, a bus driver you knew? Huh? That's a bus driver yes. you know. Okay. So I was going to sit down on the bus, but there was a young lady sitting down on the seat where I was going to sit down. That where I was feeling like I could sit down comfortable. So I said, my lady, can I sit by you, please? She asked me, why is by me? Why is by her I want to sit? If it's me, if it's she, I want to give what I have. Wow. I say I have nothing what I have. So I go to sit. So when I was going to sit down by her, she get up. She said, excuse and she get up and she abandoned the bus. She go down the bus. The bus driver tell me, get off his bus. And I get down the bus and I stand up. That time the, the permit had never make yet. So I sat up on the side. Until a bus driver by the name of Victor Bick, Lape, mm -hmm. the Calypsonian, mm -hmm. was passing late in the night. And he wow. picked me up and he bring me straight home free of charge. And there was a next time I could not get right to come to dialysis at home. And a next bus driver, they call him Painkiller Kelvin, um, was driving postmode. And he always used to put me to sit down in front of his bus because nobody wanted to sit down by me. And no bus driver, only bus driver, most of the bus drivers used to tell him, don't carry me on his bus because in, I'm making him lose passengers. He said he don't worry. And he's hoping me sit down in front and bring me home and back and still give me $20 to buy my light and do my thing at my home. Them time I was not working. So I've been through that stigma and that discrimination part of it. That is one part. The other part, I start after um, 2000 and... 12, I decided I'm going to drive to go to work again. So I went by Dr. Elwin and I asked her to, I go by traffic to pay my license. Traffic tell me I need a letter from my doctor. I go by Dr. Elwin, she write a letter from me and she send me and pay my license. When I started drive bus, nobody want to ride my bus. Imagine, two weeks ago, not long, two weeks ago I was going down on, a, on the same painkiller, my partner. And a lady was sitting on this passenger seat in front, so I had to pass on the driver's side to go in the bus to sit down in the center. So I sit down on the driver's seat, then for me to cross. There was two passengers that are ready, ready to abandon the bus because they believe I was this. One guy said he believed I was going to drive. He believed I was going to drive. <laughs> and he afraid to ride with me. So... I was driving bus and I had to stop drive bus because a lot of people afraid to ride with me because they say I would just collapse. I cannot stay so and collapse. No, I don't have, I don't have condition. I don't have fall fix. All I have is my kidney not functioning properly and I get in treatment for it. Would you cry at times when you were going through that rough patch? Do I cry plenty. And that is why now I'm home because my wife tell me, why am I tired see I crying? My wife tell me, baby, stay home and I'll go and work and take care of the, of the home. Stay and home. you're not 50 years yet, right? Huh? You're not 50 years as yet? No, I'm 48. Mm. I'm 48. So I have to stay home because I go home plenty of time and have to give my wife $10. The person I was driving for, he sell the bus because then I could not give him $120 a day. Mm -hmm. Wow. Nigel, what a story. 
Man. So I've been that through. part is that part yeah. is tough for Next our minute. people who um and I think we go back to what we were talking about, lack of information. Information. You know? Um, lack of information at the same time, people in themselves just not knowing how to deal with people who have illnesses, and so their reaction sometimes can be very cruel. Um, some of them may know, and they just they just that kind of person, you know, will be on to them. But others, lack of information. So I'm very happy, Land, I'm Land, that you could connect with us today mm-hmm. to share that story, share that process you've been going through. To help others who might be going through it as well. Yeah. And more so to help those who are not going through it so that their reaction can be different, their reaction can be better. Um I mean, how has that made you feel, you know, over all those years? You seem like you're still strong. You seem like you you've you've accepted moving on, you you are here talking to us. Well, I but ju- those kind of reactions, how how does that make you feel, man? It 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 nev it break me. On the road, on the street. But when I reach home, I put my knees down. I say, Father, if there's anything I'm doing wrong, forgive me. If there's any part of my life that I've gone wrong, deliver me. Yeah? And I Mm -hmm. pray and I ask the Father to deliver me. Deliver me. And when I make the decision to stop drive bus, I get how much opportunities. Couple, couple weeks ago, a guy called me and tell me, you want here, boss for me to drive. I tell him, I'm not interested. I really don't want to go back and do that because I cry too much. And it pain me. Wow. I driving up the road and there is me alone on the bus. Wow. How can you make money if you're alone on a bus? You understand? I have my family at home to feed. I have to pay for, I have to buy medication. Okay, I have to buy my medication. I have to survive. I have to eat well to do my work and then I have to be in that predicament, that condition where I cannot get a problem. And that is why I choose to go and for the, go vigorously behind the kidney transplant part of it. That is why I, uh, that is why I go in hard behind the kidney transplant because if I get a kidney transplant, there will be no more dialysis. They will be just going to work and do my um, live my normal life again once more. So you... Uh Waiting for a kidney transplant. I'm right there. I'm almost there. You go, you travel in May? I travel in, in, the, um, in the 20th of May. I was supposed to live on the, on the, on the 18th, but um, we don't collect all the money that we needed yet. So okay. we put it back until the 20th. Okay, we, we want to come to that. Let's just take this caller. Yeah. Um, connecting the dots, hello. Yes, I want to say something to this young man. Um, I want to congratulate him, and I want to also say something to our people in our country. Um, I would like to say that what he doing is awesome. He is the best person to inform the public about that disease. Renal disease, kidney disease, is not a death sentence, as you all said. Second of all, he did not give himself kidney disease. Mm. There are many people in Dominica that are walking, talking right now, that probably in the beginning stage of kidney disease and they have no clue. So when I hear the man said he was on a bus and a lady went down, that is pure lack of knowledge. That is pure not even knowing what kidney disease is. I'm saying, I'm like, wow, in this Time we live in, <coughs> Google is everywhere. They Google everything on Facebook, saying all kind of stuff. They can go Google those things and see it right there to explain in, in, in terms that they can understand what kidney disease is. And that man should not have been enduring such disgrace. That's for me, that's a disgrace and discrimination. <coughs> this is so, so sad. This is my country, Dominica, and people behave like that. We are in the 20th, 20th century. Mm-hmm. We right. need to get more better. Come on, people. Dominicans, please. Open your brains. Open your mind. Google. You Google all gossip. Google information. All so right. you cannot. Don't this All right. And I want him to continue to speak. He way he's speaking because he's, he's, I think, I'm a practitioner. And I can, what he's doing is a great thing. Mm-hmm. And thank God one has given him the opportunity to do so. All right. Thank you so much for your contribution on connecting the dots, Nigel. Yes. So, so Solani, you were mentioning about that you, the for the kidney transplant, you're almost there. Um, 
Facebook, you know, you know, we have a whole conversation and normally goes on Facebook and some people are asking, um, is it that you're short of money? Is it that you need more money? Um, um, what is the, what is holding you back from having that transplant? Is it the money part or is it that they haven't found the donor yet? Well, I have a sweet donor. <laughs> you have a sweet donor. <laughs> wow. I have my sweetheart, my partner, my blessings, my love of my life, Dalicia Philogens Bruno. She's right now at my home in Portsmouth, at our home in Portsmouth, listening. She's the one that's going to give me the, wow. um, donate the kidney to me. We wow. already finished all our testing in Dominica. The doctor sent a, a, a list of tests from Antigua for us to do medicals and and those other some other places and by all our, most of the tests we have to do for the transplant we did it already. And for those who don't know, when you say the love of your life, of course that's your beautiful that's wife. My beautiful. You got so you got married what year? That this year gave me three years. Since you got married. Yes. Mm. And my your wife married to me to wise me. with my medical condition and mm -hmm. she stood with me and we're doing a very we are very we are best friends wonderful wow. yes the blessings of a partner yes. wonderful yes so so it's a so um what is holding you back if you need well, that we, have, we, 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 we do have um the amount of money we need we need okay. um, we supposed to be, we supposed to, after the testing we do most of it we do most all the tests so we have to do about three or four more tests in Antigua. Um mm -hmm. we, we travel in Antigua for uh, in in on the twentieth of May to do mm -hmm. the rest testing and counseling and things like that. We have to prepare. We're doing the surgery in August. Okay. So um we have to collect a hundred and forty four thousand twenty seven dollars and nineteen cents. For the surgery, they um, stay at the hospital in, in Antigua and for one month do anti-rejection medication. That is, what, that, is the, that is what the doctor gave me, um, okay. to, um, the price he gave it to me for. Um, the testing was a different um, part of it because in the testing, it's very expensive. We, but thank God, mm -hmm. we raised funds. Um, we come here dbs we go on queue we go on and we raise funds until we could do all the tests in dominica mm. thank god thanks to dbs and mm, all the donors honestly. all the people that donated um to our to the to the cause thanks to those that will be donated and those that because mm -hmm. you left an account number and i wanted to see it as well eh? yes we have an account number we have a we have um we have um um sponsor sheets a lot of different places that um, people could go in post mode by touch of class by Gloria and Daniel, uh, Pastor Gloria and Daniel in, in Glanvillea. We have um, sponsor sheet in uh, by Lynn Bontiff in, in Marigot by Shop and Save. Mm -hmm. We have sponsor sheet by Ali Matthew in okay. Kalibishi. Mm -hmm. We have in, by um, a, a We have sponsor sheet um, a couple of places mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. post mode and around the area that I cannot remember right now. But we have a lot of sponsor sheet and we have a uh more banking number you have so, the number with you um i could get it okay right. so we have a lot of we are we trying the best to raise um so far we raise um f um about 12 13 000 something but we use most of it to do the testing because you know the testing is very expensive so we have mm -hmm. about uh eight uh, eight thousand or seven thousand something dollar on our account mm -hmm. but currently for us to go to Antigua now to do the rest of the test we need at least 12,000 EC mm -hmm. to go to Antigua mm -hmm. because we have to have to have to dialyze up there dialysis is very expensive I have to dialyze for two weeks mm -hmm. I have to um, we have to pay for the rest test that costs us about almost 4,000 mm -hmm. then we have to pay uh, to pay for um, a treadmill to check my heart's rate mm -hmm. that will cost my next 800 and something dollars wow. So we need at least twelve thousand dollars to take us from here mm -hmm. to Antigua on the twentieth. So mm -hmm. we haven't got um, um, the amount yet, 
So that's why we put back the time to the twenty eighth oh, of okay. May. L- let me just give your your information. Um, it's two two five one eight two five. That's your phone number, right? Yes. And I think you had sent me some information as well. Your account number, um, more banking, eh? It's one zero zero zero. So one thousand eight four three nine one. Yes. So one thousand eight four three nine one. Um, and the ID. The ID. Your mobile ID, are you talking about? The mobile ID is 1767 225 1825. Yes. So that's B. So I hope people can get this. Um, yes, they were just asking for that account number again. I think somebody did post it, but it's 184391, right? Yes, that's it, Nigel. That's it. Yes, yes. Um, one of our good friends here, Glenn Bishelinfeld, has actually posted it on, on the Facebook page. Mm-hmm. And there are those who are saying we'll be contributing. This is our guy, and so on and so on. So hopefully, you know, um, those in the diaspora who are connecting with us, our Connecting the Dots family, um, you know, make a contribution. Let's connect with our brother and help, you know. Um, Randall, for those who, again, for those who don't know, mm-hmm. being on di- dialysis doesn't prevent you from having a n- normal life, right? Um, no. I saw, di- you- I saw Landon running up some steps at the hospital. Flight <laughs> my Nigel. <laughs> eh, eh, I cannot get close to him. <laughs> go ahead, Landon. Go ahead, Landon. Um, this thing is that, eh? Um, dialysis doesn't hinder you from doing anything you have to do. The most thing part of me being on dialysis is I have to go to hospital three days a week. And lie down mm. the machine for three and a half hours. That's that's the most troublesome thing of it mm. for me. What, what would happen if for some reason you cannot go like every other day, so you miss a day and you have to go to the, the next day? What 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 would be happening? I wanna, I'm going to say something you're going to make you laugh, but I'm a legend. <laughs> mm-hmm. And after Maria, do you know I stay, because in the machine that was not working, mm-hmm. I stay about a week or more without dialysis. What was happening to your body? What were you feeling then? I was in survival mood. I was munching on crackers mm-hmm. and sipping and, and sucking ice. Wow. So I was not f- taking in much t- t- fluid. Let me tell you, the 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 the, basic, the way of of watching the amount of fluid you take, whether dialysis patient, you have to watch the amount of fluid you take. So if you suck ice, you take less fluid than if you drink water, and it quench your thirst faster than if you drink water. Okay. Mm-hmm. What happened is, if you put a cup of water, then you put a, a cup of ice. Leave the ice melt. And then watch the amount of water that's going to be in the cup with the ice that melts there. There's going to be less water in the cup with the ice than what the water in the other cup. So if you take, if you suck fluid, suck ice, because the, 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 the thing tells you to take less fluid than the dialysis patient, because you can fill your lungs and make you breathless. You understand? So mm. I used to be sucking ice and munching on crackers. So I had a pack of crackers in my bag. I would munch on crackers, suck eyes, and take my medication. So I was not taking any food, much toxin part of it, so that I would feel sick. Until I travel to Antigua, and I get some dialysis in Antigua, where then, but our, our machine them go back fast, because we had quick workers there. Then guys work day and night, and put back things together. I come back home and get my dialysis. What's the, what's the dialysis department like? Because you seem to be going there pretty often. What is it What is it like? Um, I'm talking about at the hospital. Um, do you know like how many machines there are? Do you know how many patients? Do you know any other information? I think information? we have 31 patients. Okay. And you have the correct um, figure. And we have one, two, three, four. We have about eight machines now. Okay. Do you think that, um, because I know like the C4 Call Alum, Alumni Association, you know, they Well, we had some... more. We had more about the, the machine them. They're working hard. Okay. So mm. they so we need more machines. Issues, mm. like issues and things like that. Because they're working mm. hard. And we have a lot of right. patients. And there's a lot of patients. Well, well as, as some of them. What a... 
Yeah, what about machines like in the in the in, in the old districts? Like do, do, they would do, serve, do, they would serve. you have to come through also? You are most, yes, all the patients are That's coming to town. Let's just take a quick call, Nigel, before we continue. Yes, you are on. Exactly. You are on. Go ahead, talking for um, well, morning, connecting morning. the dots. This is, um, well, I think my voice is recognizable. Oh, Yvonne Alexander, Alexander. you yes. two had a wonderful story. Hi, Yvonne. I yeah. want to really tell Lander how very proud I am of him, and he knows I'm one of his son supporters. I assisted, um, you know, in discussions they wanted to have regarding the formation of a Dominica Dialysis Association. I want to tell him to, you know, don't give up. I know he's a very strong individual. And I really want to even assist, make myself available if needs be, to assist him in um, educating the public about kidney disease. I wow. think this needs to be done so much more mm. on, 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 on a much mm. more... Um, quite much more frequently because I mean the level of discrimination that mm -hmm. they suffer mm -hmm. is you know you just can't believe that in a small place like Dominica people are so unaware of mm -hmm. kidney disease that you would shun someone that you would um, not want to sit next to them you know it's it's really a sad situation mm -hmm. and I want to commend his efforts and he has my full support I wish him the very best God go with him Mm -hmm. um, that, you know, we are working towards uh, ensuring that he gets to Antigua and gets the, the, the surgery that he needs mm -hmm. and he can come back and continue to champion the cause I of like dialysis that. patients like in Dominica. Thank you, so Yvonne. Bruno, Bruno, all the very, very best. You know you have my full support. Thank you, right. thank you, thank you. I know that. tremendous work that you're doing mm -hmm. and may he continue to be with you and mm -hmm. support you and comfort you and... Um, you know, just let his will be done, his perfect will be done in this situation. Thank you. And, you know, just call on the general public to please be much more supportive. Yeah. You know, be more empathetic. Ask questions rather than think that you can discriminate against mm -hmm. someone. Not give the person a lease. Don't drive right in the same bus with the person. I mean, come on, Dominica. We can do better than that. Let's support those who are ill. People do not go into the shops buying illness. And any one of us can become ill with so much toxicity in the environment and the food that we eat. This can rarely happen to just about anybody. Yeah, and right. there are so many people suffering with kidney disease. Let's, let's support them mm -hmm. rather than trying to discriminate against them. Mm -hmm. And I really want to call on the public to support Lander financially. You know, let him mm -hmm. be the standard of what is possible with somebody who is determined. So let us support him financially to ensure that um, he gets to go to Antigua and he gets to have his his um, kidney transplant. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thank All you. The very best, Landa. Thank you. Thank you, you. And thank you so much, um, Ivona and, and, Nigel. and Nigel. Thank you so, so, so very much for, you know, having um, Landa yeah. as a guest. Yeah. Thank, yes, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ivona. Yeah. Oh, yes. She was a guest as well. We had her um, a cancer survivor and she told oh, yes. us. Oh, yes. Yes, we did. Yeah. Yes, we did. It was a wonderful program with Yvonne Alexander. Thank you. Oh, yes. oh, yes. I think someone was very quickly, just before we wrap up, mm -hmm. I think someone was asking us to mention that ID number again mm -hmm. they, so that they can know how to do the funding, mm -hmm. the mobile ID number, I think, mm -hmm. and the account Let's number. Pull it up again. Yeah, but Lando Bruno, I'm, I'm really impressed with, you know, who you have become, even, even through these challenges that, that, you know, that have confronted you. It, 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 well, the challenges have made you a stronger person. I did not know you before. Yeah. But um, I got to know you since last year. Yeah. You know, and we have spoken a lot. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm really impressed that Thank you did you not very, see it as a death sentence, much. but you decided to fight this thing and be an advocate as well. Thank you. Yes, Nigel. Let me just get this. So for those, for those who might be going through dialysis now, and as we wrap up, for those who are going through dialysis, for those who may have given situations, for those who are not knowledgeable and, and mm -hmm. fearful and everything else, what's your parting words for them? What would you like to tell them? I would like to tell them that, um, as you know, it's not a death sentence. Don't give up. Um, even in case you want any information or you want to talk to somebody, you have somebody that go into that um, situation where they will be going to dialysis. Um, you could get my number, call me. Mm -hmm. I could try my best to see how I could um, assist in, in, in educating and 
and making you know what to expect or what not to expect or how to take your diet properly so that you could help your because the the person that you will be um affecting the most is the caretaker the person that will be taking mm -hmm. care of you mm -hmm. so we, we really have to really emphasize on the person that will be the caretaker the person yeah. that will be taking care that of the of closest you. closest person to you your next of kin then okay mm -hmm. because they could be hurting more oh, than yes. you that person needs a lot of support as yes well. so we um dialysis is not a bad thing Oh. It's not a bad thing. Let I will me, never let me just give your, your details. Yes. The, the mobile banking um, for the donations, mobile ID. It's one seven six seven two two five one eight two five. The account number is 1000, so one zero 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 eight four three nine one. Landa Bruno, Landa B. Nigel, the time has come and gone. Yes. What a program. And um, a lot is happening on Facebook. We did not even get a chance to really go through some of the comments, some of the suggestions and the questions as well. But um, we wish we wish Lando all the best and his wife as well. Strength to them. And I want and, to say to all the bus drivers, donate to the cause. All the nurses in the hospital, donate to the cause. Mm -hmm. All the workers at the hospital, or they seen me too much, or they seen me for too long, yeah. donate to the cause. <laughs> donate to the cause. Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> donate to the cause. Donate to the cause. So, Nigel, very good program. Let me shout out, by the way, Tilly. Tilly is always around. Um, nice of you, Tilly, to always, you know, make time for that for that connection, connecting the dots. Um, Nigel, what can I say? But um, I really enjoy to this program. Oh, really yes. Oh, yes. And, and, and I mean, I thank Landa for coming to connect with us and yeah. being part of the Connecting the Dots mm -hmm. family. And thank we appreciate it. Much. We're glad you're able to share your information, mm -hmm. help those who go in through situations. Um, I know on the Facebook page, people have been asking for your phone number. So I guess if you give it, maybe somebody two might seven, put six, it on the... Seven, on, 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 six. Two seven six. Six seven one six. Yeah, two seven six six seven one six. Right, two seven six six seven one six. So those of you asking, I hope you got it. Mm -hmm. um, if not, you can go back and replay, and you'll get the number. You get all the information. But thanks for connecting, Lando. Appreciate it. Wish you all the best on May twentieth. I wish you all the best on your transplant. Um, you found the treasure in your wife. Continue to appreciate it. Yes. And thanks for connecting and sharing your information. Thank you very much, everybody. Yes. Mm -hmm. When you hear the word wife, Nigel, he smiles a lot, eh? and that says a lot. Too. <laughs> As I said, I see one yes, big smile. One big smile. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. 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 All right. So that's it. That's it. Nigel will link up again next week. Land of all the best. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> all right. So that's it on uh, connecting the dots today. Join us again next week, Saturday, God willing, for another program.